Hello fantastic people! One Bad Dwarf is all about getting this one lucky dwarf to the exit of the level. Unfortunately, most of his little friends will have to die on the way. You know, they sacrificing themselves for the greater good. Currently there are three ways the dwarf can die. He can drop from the height, get impaled on the spikes, or step into the lava. I didn't want the lava to be a simple sprite, so I had to learn a little bit about the shader graph. Luckily for me, I knew about the Gabriel Aguiar Prot YouTube channel. Seriously, if you haven't heard about him, he's like the guru of visual effects in Unity. And you should definitely check his channel out. Last thing before we start. If you'd rather get this shader instead of creating it yourself, you can get it from the patreon.com slash ptit. As my game is heavily tile based, I create a new tile map and call it lava. Because I will apply my custom material onto the whole tile map. As the tile, I use a simple white square. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you may want to check this tutorial out. Now, inside of my shaders folder, I click right mouse button, go to create, shader graph, URP, unlit shader graph. Now we double click on the shader and that opens new window. As a first thing, I change the main preview from sphere to quad. Let's start by creating the highlights. I press space and search for the Voronoi node. The easiest way to control the white lines with is to connect the Voronoi output to the power node. Then we simply have to modify the B value. In order to have access to it from the inspector, let's create new property of type float. Let's call it highlight spread. Let's set its default value to 2.5. Then let's drag and drop it into the graph and connect it as a B value of the power node. Black and white lava would be pretty boring, so let's add a little bit of color to it. I'm adding the multiply node. To its A input, I connect the output of the power node. Now I'm creating new property of type color. I call it highlights color. Of course, I drag it into the graph and connect its output to the multiply B input value. Now I'm clicking on the property and changing its mode from default to HDR. It is a little bit worse for the performance, but the areas of the high intensity look much better. Also it seems that it works much better with the Bloom post processing effect. Then I change the default color and add a little bit of intensity to it. If the mode would be default, we wouldn't have the intensity setting. Now I'm adding the one minus node. It reverses the strength of the input node. So the black areas will become white and the white areas will become black. I'm going to multiply the output of that node with a new property of type color. I'm going to call that property base color. Also for this node I set the mode to HDR and adjust the color. Now I'm going to connect the outputs of the multiply nodes. I'm going to do that using the add node. At this point I would like to preview the output in the game. So I'm going to connect the output of the add node to the base color of the shader. I need to click on the save asset button and close the window. I right click on the shader graph file. Go to create material. This will generate the material based on that particular shader. Now I drop the material onto the tile map. Ok, so the first thing we need to fix is the tiling. At this moment it looks like each individual tile has its own texture. To have it tiled properly we'll need to add the position node. We have to make sure that the space on this node is set to world. Then we'll need to add the tiling and offset node. We grab the output of the position node and connect it to the UV input of the tiling and offset node. Then we connect the output of that node to the Voronoi's UV input. This combination of nodes does very simple thing. The Voronoi texture by itself is seamless. That means we can traverse it endlessly and we should never see the seams. This combination of position and tiling and offset ensures that the part of the Voronoi texture applied to a given object is based on its word position. That ensures that all the objects sharing this material can be moved all over the scene and the seams will never be visible. It's pretty cool. But you know what would be even more cool? Making it move. And of course you subscribing to my channel, liking and commenting this video. In general, when we want the shader to be animated, we use the time node. So let's add one. 
and then let's connect it to the angle offset of the Voronoi node. There is one small problem we'll need to fix. Because the time starts at zero, the Voronoi node will look like a grid. To prevent that from happening, let's adjust the time by adding some arbitrary number to it. We'll do that using the add node. And then of course we'll need a float property. Let's call it start time. Now we need to add both of the values, and then we can use their sum as the input value for the angle offset. For the start time default I'm going to use 50. Now we need a property to control the speed of the movement. We are going to multiply its value by the output of the add node. Any value above 1 will make the movement quicker. And of course, any value below 1 will make the movement slower. Let's keep it at 0.5. There is one more thing we should be controlling. And that is the scale of our lava. Let's create another property of type float. Let's call it scale. Let's drop it into the graph and then let's connect it to the cell density of the Voronoi node. Let's tidy up a little bit and then set a default value for our scale. Fantastic! Let's now start the game and adjust some material settings. The edges of the lava look a little bit wrong, so I'm going to create another tile map and call it Lava Edges. Then I'm going to use my simple edge rule tile to make it look slightly better. Now I'm going to decrease the opacity of the lava edge and we are done. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.